there's not a lot of entrepreneurs that 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 talk about their faith and that's what first when i when i first looked into your stuff that's yeah. what threw me into you i'm like man i like how he's not afraid to speak about it it's it's interesting this whole social media i mean i went all in two years ago um but there was a period of time i just gone all in on social media i was kind of in a weird place business wise there was a lot of uncertainty a lot of chaos stuff going on and trying to figure out like back when we talked about you know is insurance my passion that was when i was really tormented by that like am i is this what i'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life like being the insurance business one friday i was uh, leaving my office i was driving up to Asheville, north carolina my wife uh, was up there. It's where her family is. She had gone up earlier that day and we we're going to grill out with her family that night. Got done with, with my day and headed up the road to Asheville, North Carolina from Greenville, South Carolina. And in order to do that, you have to basically go you know, up a mountain. I go through this part of the mountains where I always lose service. And it was around that time that I, I just had been in this place in my life where I just couldn't figure out what I was really supposed to be doing. I own an insurance agency and, and we're having all this success and I started documenting my life on social media six months prior, but things hadn't really picked up with momentum and that it's, it's just that beginning phase and just trying to figure out like, what, what was I, what am I supposed to do? What am I born to do? And there was kind of just a, a heavy, um, it was kind of just a heavy, heavy period of time for me. And I remember as I was driving, dr uh, driving down the road, I began to pray and not just a, you know, a prayer like you would do before a, a quick meal, um, but was just crying and very emotional and, and praying out loud and just asking God to, to tell me what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I need you to tell me, I need you to show me what I'm supposed to be doing because I feel like I'm doing some of the right things, but I just, I need to feel like this is what I'm meant to do, what you've meant for me to do. And so I need you to show me right now. I need you to tell me right now, what am I supposed to be doing? And so right about that time was when I was coming back on the other side of the mountain, getting closer to Asheville when I got service back. And I've been texting with my wife as I was going up the road. Um, not that that's a good thing to do texting and driving but that's what I was doing and uh, she had had a long day as well with our daughter I think our daughter was kind of being uh, not easy to handle that day and this was back when I still drank and so I was asking her you know we were gonna be grilling out that night with her family I asked her if I should stop and, and uh, pick up some beer on the way and she said sure and I said or beer and tequila because you know her day had been as difficult as mine maybe it would take a little bit something stronger that evening to calm the nerves and so that was the last question I had asked her before I had lost service I said or beer and tequila and right as I said that I came on the other side of the mountain and got service back and my phone vibrated in my lap at that very second and I picked it up and it was a text from my wife and it said preach and so as I'm asking God what do you what do you want what am I supposed to be doing with my life? He said, preach. I can remember looking at that text and just thinking, uh, come again. Uh, this, this doesn't make any, any sense whatsoever. And what I realized over the next year was that it didn't say be a preacher is it said preach. And you can preach from any platform, social media being one of the absolute best. And my style being that of, you know, the entrepreneur influencer, but that there's something different and slowly over, over time, being able to put these messages out there to where I can take someone kind of like a mosaic where it's not in your face. Like, do you know where you're going when you die? But slowly over time, like there's something different about that guy. What is it about that guy? And all of a sudden they see these little things that are kind of faith-based or faith related. And they're like, huh, he goes to church, huh? He's posting this stuff. And then slowly over time being able to, you know, really change people. And so isn't it interesting that as I sit here today and having just gotten back from Nicaragua where I was able to literally preach uh, to, you know, a couple of hundred Nicaraguans in, in this small barrio church and kind of have this come full circle this moment two years ago, it goes to show that when you ask for something when you ask for the answer that you have to be willing to not only listen to be able to hear 
that answer, but then also to put in the work and execute on what that answer is telling you to do and what that answer is guiding you, what direction that answer is guiding you in.